Hey guys, so today we have an analysis of the polling data that we've been getting from Thursday the 1st of November 2018. So, oh, look at that, we just got a poll from Friday the 2nd of November. We'll cover that in tomorrow's polling update. But today we'll be looking at the Florida Senate race, the Arizona Senate race, West Virginia Senate race, Tennessee Senate race, Texas Senate race, New Mexico Senate race, Pennsylvania Senate race, um, we won't really talk about Massachusetts that much, but then we'll go on to the governor races. We have the Florida governor race, Colorado governor race, Tennessee governor race, Texas governor race, New Mexico governor race, Pennsylvania governor race, Massachusetts governor race, Arkansas governor race. We won't really cover Massachusetts and Arkansas that much. South Dakota governor race, New Jersey 7th district. So we covered the governor's polls, then we'll go on to our house districts, New Jersey 7, New Mexico 1, New Mexico 2, and wrapping things up with West Virginia 3, which, as you know, is one of my favourite districts to discuss because, as you know, I feel that Richard Ojeda can pull up the upset in that one. Um, this poll is disagreeing with me, but I always like to, um, you know, uh, talk about the polls a little bit. Then we'll wrap things up with three Trump job approvals, two 2018 generic congressional vote, and a direction of the country poll. So, starting off in the Florida Senate race, we have the race between Rick Scott and Bill Nelson that has tightened in recent days. The latest poll coming out, in fact, the last four consecutive polls we've had all show Bill Nelson leading by two. And that's pretty good news for him, considering that beforehand he, he was losing to Rick Scott by a significant amount. Um, but now he seems to be pulling away a little bit. And um, it looks like he will narrowly be re-elected United States Senator from Florida. I'm actually going to move it because we've had three consecutive polls, CNN, St. Pete's polls, and even a Republican group, Traflanger group. I'm actually going to move it from the leaning Democratic column to the tilt Democratic column because we today we've had three consecutive polls, one after the other, all showing Bill Nelson lead, leading by two, and that classifies it in very narrowly in the tilt Democratic column. But think of it as a tilt and lean kind of in-between state. Um, so, yeah. And um, I'm going to go through all these pretty quickly. I won't spend like five minutes analysing every single poll because we don't have time. There's a lot of data to get to. Um, looking at the Arizona Senate race, we've, we've been getting a lot of conflicting data from this state. Um, now, ABC 15 Ohio Predictive Insights shows McSally leading by seven points because this is very conflicting data. Beforehand we had cinema plus three, plus six, plus four, a tie, and now we get McSally plus seven. I, I would like to see some more consistent data in the state. I think that this poll could be an outlier. The last time they did a poll, I don't know if they show it. Yes, they do. Um, <coughs> it did show um, Martha McSally leading by six. The same polling firm showed McSally leading by one. The last time that polling firm showed cinema leading was all the way back in July. So maybe this this um, polling firm could have a slight bias towards Mark McSally. But considering this is kind of an outlier compared to the other polls that we've been seeing, which shows a tight race, maybe a slight tilt over to Kristen Cinema, keeping it in the tilt Democratic column. <coughs> Next, we have the West Virginia Senate race. This is closer than expected. The Republicans are coming back to Patrick Morrissey in this state. Um, if you see the last, the last poll we had shows 52 to 36. I don't know why suddenly Manchin has dropped and the Republican has gone up. Um, it, it could just be an outlier, but, you know, uh it's it could um could go to the republicans but i i still think that um 
the Democrats will pull this one off. I kind of want to keep it in the likely column just because he voted for Kavanaugh. If he voted against Kavanaugh and we were getting these kind of numbers, I would move it into leaning Democratic. But I, I, I feel these polls could be outliers. And until we get some more confirming data, I'm keeping it in the likely Democratic column. Um, next, we have the Tennessee Senate race. Two polls. The CNN poll shows Blackburn leading by four. And then Emerson shows Blackburn leading by eight. This is definitely a leaning GOP state. Not a likely one. Not a likely GOP state, as 538 puts it, which, which I've already ranted on. Um, I think it's a leaning GOP state. Um... Democrats are definitely dragging on Phil Bredesen and it's not looking as good for him as it was in the beginning of this cycle. Now we have Texas. Um, Ted Cruz leads by three. That's it. This poll I do believe was an outlier, so we've gone from eight to seven to six to five to three. Maybe at the end this could go to better or look. Um seen a lot of people say, you know, well, right on schedule, you know, this is now going to the Democrats. You could see in previous polling that Beto O'Rourke was stuck at a ceiling of about 45%. 43, 45, 38, 42, 45, 42, 44, 45, 43, 45, 45. You could never get above 45. Now he's gone to 46, to 47. Maybe the next poll will be 48. I don't know. But we'll have to see if these polls are outliers or if this is a continuing trend towards better or rock. And then if if we get it within two percentage, we, I would say if we get the average within four percentage points, I would move it into the tilt column because I do think the polls do underestimate or rock. And then if we get it, if we get that polling average between two to three percent i would move it into the democratic column because i think that the enthusiasm is on o'rourke's side and the polls aren't taking that into account probably by about two to three percentage points of people who aren't being properly represented in the polls that will come out on election day um but yeah if you kind of get my logic there um that's kind of what we're paying for um in new mexico senate race this is probably going to go to the democrats at the end of the day and not the um libertarian many people want to see the libertarian exceed, exceed in this one but gary johnson probably not going to pull off this upset and martin heinrich looks like he's going to be re-elected united states senator from new mexico i'm keeping it in the likely in the um safe democratic column Pennsylvania, I don't really want to discuss this. This is going to go to the Democrats at the end of the day. KC plus 15, that should come at no surprise whatsoever. I have it in the safe Democratic column, but um, it, it really should be no surprise to anyone who's been following it. Massachusetts, Warren leads by 22. That should not be a surprise again. In Florida, the governor rose. So we finished the Senate polls. Now on to the governor polls. Gillum leads by one, according to CNN, and two, according to by a Republican group. So that's pretty weird, given that a center-left organization like CNN would show um, would show a closer margin than a Republican group. Um, <laughs> pretty weird, but. Anyway, Gillen plus one, Gillen plus two. This is probably going to go over to the Democrats. The race has tightened. Um, Gillen plus 12, plus six, plus seven, plus four. It's tightened down to one to three percent margins. But at the end of the day, I think this will go over to the Democratic column. Um, I also think that Andrew Gillum and Bill Nelson can help each other out, drag each other along. Colorado, I know this video could be dragging on a little bit, um, so let's get right into it. Colorado, this is probably going to go to the Democrats' polis plus five, according to a Republican poll. Again, it looks like Jared Polis will be the next governor of Colorado. Uh, Tennessee, Bill, Bill Lee versus, versus Carl Dean. Um, 
lead leads by 10 according to CNN, 13 according to Emerson. Probably going to go over towards the Republicans at the end of the day, that one. Um, I don't know why it just refreshed, but whatever. Um, I'm, I don't want to cover the Texas governor race. Actually, yeah, I will cover Texas because it's closer than before. Um, Abbott, Greg Abbott only leading by eight. Um, definitely an outlier compared to the other polls. Um, I, I still think this is a safe GOP state. Um, if we go ahead and look at New Mexico, New Mexico governor race, Pierce versus Grisham, probably going to be a pickup for the Democrats. This one leaning Democratic. I have it likely Democratic. Um, I, I'm going to keep it in the Democratic column, definitely the polling showing that. Now, um, we have the Pennsylvania governor race. I don't really want to cover that. It's going to go to the Democrats. Massachusetts will go to the Republicans. And then Arkansas also going to go to the Republicans. Now, let's go to South Dakota, one of the surprises this season. Um, <clears throat> a Mason-Dixon poll showed a tie. And then a new poll came out showing Noam leading by three. Chrissy Noam increased her numbers by two. And then Billy Sutton decreased by one. Still, this is a great place to be if you're a Democrat in South Dakota. If you can even get close to um, taking down Chrissy, Chris, Christy Noam, that's a great sign for you because this is a deep, deep red state. Now let's go to the House District, New Jersey 1. Did not mean to do that. Let's just go back. There we go. New Jersey one. No, sorry, New Jersey seven. New Mexico one. New Mexico two. West Virginia three. And I want to make a few changes to my 2018 house map because of these new polls. Now, um, New Jersey seven. I have going towards the Democrats. I believe. Um, in a leaning or tilt scenario, the 7th district. Yeah, I have it tilting towards the Democrats. This new poll shows an 8-point lead. I'm moving it into the leaning Democratic column. So one there moving towards the Democrats there. Um, next up, we have New Mexico, the 1st district there. Likely Democratic. The poll is definitely showing that. Um, if we go going to the state of New Mexico... I have this one as likely to go over to the Democrats. Um, next, we have the second district of New Mexico. Um, Yuvi Harrell versus Yorkshire Torres Small. Um, in the home stretch, Harrell seems to be doing kind of well. I still think that Yorkshire Torres Small can pull this one off at the end of the day in a tilt Democratic column. <coughs> Here we go again. West Virginia 3. I still think this will go to the Democrats because of those campaign ads he ran. I, I seriously do because, wow, those those ads were just, just like, I can't even begin to describe you how many voters that persuaded to go over to Ojeda's side. And these polls are not taking them into account. And that's why <clears throat> I'm putting it a plus 50, almost plus 50 Trump district into the Tilt Democratic column. Thank you guys for watching. Oh, not done yet. President Trump job approval. 2018 generic congressional vote direction of the country. Let's briefly go through. All three of these. President Trump job approval underwater by 12, 1, and 8. Um, 2018 generic congressional vote underwater by 9 and 9. That's pretty good news going into the home stretch. And then, according to Rasmussen, underwater by 10 for the direction of the country. So, thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.